My name is Aston Whitelink, and today I'm going to be talking to you about deploying, monitoring, and managing your AnyPoint platform. Um, before I get started, I'd just like to introduce myself a little bit about who I am. So yeah, Aston Whitelink, I'm a sales engineer turned product marketer. I have um, a variety of startup and enterprise experience. You can see from the logos down there, kind of a startup sandwich with uh, some enterprise bread. Uh, and I'm the PM and the product marketer covering the AnyPoint platform services. Pretty broad spectrum PMM. I've got a specialization in video. I always joke that I can do good 2D business animation, but you don't have to worry about me getting poached by Pixar anytime soon. So hopefully you'll see some cool uh, platform videos uh, in the future, which I'll be sharing uh, on the community. But you don't want to hear any more about me. That's not why you're here. You're here to hear about the AnyPoint platform services. Um, but what are they? Are they the unsung hero of AnyPoint platform and MuleSoft? I'm a little bit biased, uh, but if that's your takeaway after the, this call at the end of the day, then uh, I'm, I think I'll have done my job correctly. Um, before I dive in straight away, I just like to set the, set the baseline. What are the platform services? We broadly think about them in three different ways, three different buckets. The first being deploy and the kind of different functionalities and abilities to deploy your mule applications. Uh, we have monitoring, which is the ability and functions that are all around monitoring the infrastructure and your applications to make sure that they all run smoothly. And then finally, we have the management bucket, which is about configuring your Mule applications and making sure that they work in the best way that you know is best for you. So I'm going to be going through a variety of upcoming and current uh, sort of enhancements that we've made to the platform services. Really excited, and I'm going to start by talking about uh, deployment with the Mule 4.6 release strategy, or the new release strategy, I should say. So hopefully you've already heard about this, I'd like to hope, um, but we've adopted a kind of new uh, cadence for our release strategy for the Mule runtime, uh, or two different ones. There's the Edge one, which is three times a year, February, June, October. This is predom predominantly valuable to our, I guess, Cloud Hub one and two customers, just because it's more of a uh, current uh, quick release cadence uh, and that has a smaller support window but you're also getting the um, a shorter support cycle but you're also getting you know the value of those frequent upgrades so that's the edge um, release cadence and then we have our LTS one which is um, longer term service which is uh, a, more of a year if you know our predominantly maybe our RTF or on-premise customers a bit more comp complications if they are trying to upgrade a bit more uh, planning needs to go into it and that has that longer support window as well so that's the new cadence um the edges because we wanted to align with salesforce that's their release cadence and hopefully we can get some real juicy value from that synergy uh and i think i'm right in saying that 4.6 um the mule runtime was released on tuesday i believe I'm, i saw the announcement and i've read the release notes so yeah it's definitely it's out now and uh that is the first mule runtime that supports uh, Java 17. You don't have to upgrade to Java 17 yet. It supports both Java 8 and Java 17. We would recommend uh, uh, looking to upgrade within the next year in 2024, just because some third party things that we're working with the runtime uh, after a year, probably only going to be supporting Java 17. So keep that in mind. Uh, and that is available now. Next up, I'd like to talk to you about a new upcoming feature, horizontal auto scaling. So what's a massive headache when you have your infrastructure and you're handling requests and they spike for some reason and you kind of had to scramble to deal with that spike in, uh, in requests, uh, a high, huge amount of volume. Uh, it used to be an issue, not so much anymore because MuleSoft is releasing a horizontal auto scaling for Cloud Hub 2 and RTF. So that means in the back end, uh, you can configure this, just a simple checkbox, you can spin up additional uh, uh, infrastructure to support those um, spikes and requests really easily. And something's really cool about this that I think gets overlooked a lot with um, when, when talking about scaling up infrastructure or auto scaling, you can actually scale down as well. So it'll automatically scale down your infrastructure. Um, so it's all about efficiency. It's not just you know dealing with uh, some influxes. It's also monitoring um, when you're using too much resource and scaling uh, efficiently. So that's available for our new prices and packaging customers on Cloud Hub 2 and RTF, and that's coming uh, in the first half of this year. Um, keep an eye out maybe towards the end of February for some announcements around that, um, all things going smoothly. But yeah, this first half of this year is what we're saying. And you might be wondering, why is this just for Cloud Hub 2 and Runtime Fabric? And that's because uh, this is built on uh, horizontal pod auto scaling. It's Kubernetes. So Cloud Hub 2, of course, our managed Kubernetes service, RTF, Runtime Fabric, that's going to bring your own Kubernetes. Uh, and MuleSoft, at MuleSoft, we really want to be a big part of the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. We really believe in the technology. And I think that's reflected by the fact we're investing in, in features like this. 
And speaking of Kubernetes, and it's almost like I built this slide to tee myself up, um, RTF on additional platforms. This is an area of Runtime Fabric we're um, investing in quite heavily as well. So last year, we really tried to lay the foundation of our commitment to Kubernetes and um, you know, Runtime Fabric. And that's by you know working with the key cloud vendors, the main ones, here, AWS, Google, Azure, um, and then also moving to expand uh, that footprint as well to get some additional vendors in. And that's all about our strategic partnerships. You know, That's what we're aiming for with the major ones, but also future proofing, making sure the uh, ecosystem uh, is available for um, a variety of different Kubernetes deployments. And that's what we're kind of continuing with this year. So the first half of this year as well, we'd like to offer um, deployment um, availability for any platform that conforms to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation uh, sort of standards for Kubernetes. So again, it won't be the last time you hear me say that today, talking about Kubernetes. We really want to be part of that ecosystem. We see the value of MuleSoft and yeah, we're doubling down in our support and also you know building on top of it and getting really getting value from that innovation. I think that's everything for deploy. So that's deploy out up. And that's next up we have monitor. So I'm going to be talking about some really exciting stuff that's coming in monitoring. There are actually four major monitoring launches that are coming in the near term. Uh, the first one is kind of a revamped monitoring um, experience, you know, given it um, a, a redesign. So modernize the, the view, lots of some fancy new analytics, templates, um, any kind of mix in between, build a, uh, an analytic builder, report builder, uh, and the ability to logically sort of um, group uh, things within uh, any point together and slice and dice the, the view um, by things like business unit. So that's going to be available in, in H1. We also announced it or um, going to launch something called the metric service, again, an H1, um, stay tuned, but this is a either a UI-based uh, experience um, that or via an API that lets you create your custom queries um, to pull that monitoring data and, and extract it as well if you need to move it into a different uh, monitoring uh, ecosystem. So those are still coming in H1, keep an eye out for those. And then finally, big drum roll, please. We'd also excited uh, for the upcoming release of distributed tracing and telemetry exporter for just for Cloud Hub 2 at the moment. Distributed tracing, of course, being the practice of um, adding or appending a trace into the header of a request and then watching or being able to see an analytic as that request moves through your application network. Um, incredibly valuable to see, get a holistic understanding of how your requests are actually being processed rather than just having to you know, take the logs and sort of work backwards to understand if there's any issue. So really excited for distributed tracing, very powerful uh, analytical and monitoring tool. And also hand in hand with that is um, what we're calling telemetry exporter built on top of open telemetry. Um, observability is of course a big thing unto itself. Um, you have your you know, data dogs, Splunks, your observability and monitoring ecosystem. Um, we really want any point in MuleSoft to sort of be a part of that as well. Uh, and that's why we're um, making available the telemetry data um, via the open telemetry standard. Again, this is coming in H1 for everything apart from APIs and the APIs, we're trying to um, get this data and the ability to, to do these traces uh, in, in H2. So stay tuned for that. And I just thought this was cool. I wanted to share this. Um, open telemetry, something I learned is actually the uh, second most popular Cloud Native Computing Foundation uh, feature after Kubernetes. I just wanted to point this out because two things I've talked about so far, Kubernetes, open telemetry, the big uh, Cloud Native CNCF uh, projects, two huge areas of investment um, for, for MuleSoft. So that's monitoring. And I'm going to switch across to the management. I'm going to start by talking about Anypoint MQ cross region failover. So, Anypoint MQ is, of course, our messaging system. Uh, this is uh, the, it, you know, it takes messages from event, um, event producers and moves them across uh, to event consumers. This is something that's just released uh, recently. Oh, no, the, the update that is. And, oh, um, sorry, stumbling over myself. What happens though if there's a blockage in 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 the in the queue? Um, well, with this new release that we announced, I heard it was launched last week. Uh, now, just for, again by a checkbox in the in the back end, you can spin up an additional failover or a failover region that will take those messages if a blockage occurs and then push them through uh, a failover region. So there's no disruption in that um, in that messaging service. Really powerful feature if you rely on messaging via MQ. This is uh, something that's really fantastic. Um, and it is out of the box. It's available out of, as an out of the box feature. 
And of course, once the failover queue, uh, once the blockage um, uh, is removed, they'll start using the, the, you know, the traditional queue as well. And this is, I will say, this is only available at the moment for standard queues. Next up, Exchange. It's not just a repository, okay? Everyone uses Exchange. Everyone hosts their, um, you know, their Mule applications, their APIs, and everything's made accessible via Exchange. But not everyone maximizes its value. There's a lot of value in Exchange apart from it just being a place where you can store your different Mule assets. Um, there's actually, I mean, one of the cool features that was uh, spun up last year was the engagement score. This is kind of a weighted score across a variety of different vectors um, that indicate how um, used or how utilized an asset within Exchange is um, is being within your, you know, as as it's deployed in your in your organization. A lot of business value there, um, and we'd like to get into that as well. And so, just to highlight that. Um, this is available or going to be available at the moment. It's available, yeah, for your flows and uh, things like that. But it's going to be available for APIs, REST APIs, and API fragments in the first half of the year. And then we want to be making it available for like connectors, examples, and templates in the second half of the year. And some self-promotion, uh, we are going to be having a uh, an exchange-focused community session uh, coming in April. It's not available yet. I don't think we've launched the, the page yet, but just letting you know, um, I'll be talking a little bit. You don't want to hear from me. We we'll also have the PM, uh, Ria, shout out to Ria. Uh, and she's going to be talking about all the kind of juicy business value that Exchange has to offer. Really excited for that session. And then last but not least, I'd like to talk about any point and Salesforce interoperability. So of course, Mulesoft and Salesforce uh, working together is a huge business goal of us uh, at Mulesoft. We have all the value in core Salesforce, things like flow orchestrations, flow builder, your Einstein bots, et cetera, everything that kind of encompasses the core features of Salesforce. Then you have the value within any point that can be, you know, your process automations, things you build in Composer, your AnyPoint APIs. And we really want those to work uh, together and have, create that bi-directional trust, make it really seamless to get the value uh, and have different assets from those uh, different two different applications, but working in a really seamless uh, manner. And that's what we're building towards this year. So um, in the first half, um, we're really working towards getting RPAs and composer flows as invocable actions within Salesforce. Um, uh, so um, that's already the process has been really trimmed down. Like it's a lot easier than it has been to get them working together. There's a lot of innovation going on there. Um, in fact, Anshul, who's a product manager, she's going to be giving a talk at TDX about that very thing. So keep an eye out for that if you are going to TDX. Um, progressing towards the end of the year in summer, we'd like to support um, non-composite -com SKUs for any point and Salesforce. Um, so if they're not on the same SKU at the moment, it's uh, it's not possible, but we're going to uh, create that And uh, if you we're going to support them that scenario as the year progresses. And then finally, uh, towards winter, we want to have APIs become invocable actions, not just the flows and the RPA components uh, as well so towards the end of the year. And also just make the uh, the record sync as well, make it a lot easier just uh, when those, these two applications are talking to each other. So those are, in a very quick span of time, some updates and enhancements to the AnyPoint platform services. Um, but before I finish and I go to q and I just like to do, I, I've got to do some shameless self-promotion while I have you here. So captured audience. The first thing I'd like to do is talk about um, a community session that um, I'm hosting with all the PMs. You've seen some, I've talked a little bit um, at the surface today about some of the management capabilities. We're going to do a deep dive on AnyPoint MQ, on horizontal auto scaling the new usage dashboard and talk a little bit about Exchange. This page is live, so if you're interested in these platform services, the management capabilities, sign up for that. And that is on the 26th of March, I believe, and that page is live, so you can sign up right now. Next up, just want to say lots of, I have as a platform, as a platform PMM, we've got a lot of launches. It's very front loaded this year uh, for launch content. So keep an eye on the blog. I'll be uh, on the blog, on the YouTube. I'm going to be sharing all this in the community as well if you're in the Slack channel. Um, but yeah, keep, a, keep an eye on that as well because uh, a lot of good content coming on that front. And then finally, TDX. So I talked uh, you know, about how excited I was about distributed tracing. Um, I'm actually giving a talk. Um, with the head engineer, I think it might be or will be with uh, about distributed tracing, uh, AI and observability, the future of distributed tracing. You can see how I managed to expertly weave the topic of AI uh, into, into my talk. And that's going to be at March 7th. It is at 8 a.m. It's the morning session. So if you can't attend, that's all right too. I think I'm going to be recording it. It's kind of an on-demand asset as well that you can consume later. 
So that is everything I was going to talk about today. I'm just checking time. Perfect five minutes for Q&A, bang on time. Are there any questions? I thought I'd leave this up so people can see the different uh, pillars and the different features I've talked about uh, as I have any questions. I was to talk about the questions. Actually, I might switch back. We have a question on the sure. general channel. Can Fabulous. you? Let me have a look. General I have channel. She am recording. Switch. Where am I looking? Sorry. Let me put in the Q and A. Please do. Cool. Went to add up too. Is it mandatory to have the assets? Okay. Ten point exchange. I have questions. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm still early days here. I will a hundred percent get back to you on that though and find out. I see it's been outvoted as well. I will, yeah, I don't know the answer to, to that question, but I will write it down and get back to you with an answer. Sorry, I can't be more help. Oops, sorry, I'm just writing it down so I don't forget. My apologies. No, no, no worries, it's perfect. Cool, are there any other questions? I don't see any in the Q&A. Seems we don't have any more questions, but we can oh, yeah. wait for a minute to see. Sure. It's great presentation. And I love your idea of the shameless self-promotion. <laughs> yes, it's got to be done. I have a captive audience, you know. Uh, I'm always happy. And hopefully, I mean, if I hope there's some interest as well. We are going to uh, invite you to the other events, community events to present. Be yes, ready. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fabulous. I'm always up for it. Yeah, I've, it's my first community. I, I think I... I Go for it, yeah. Do you have a, a, the name of your session for TDX or is it a secret? No, I have the name of my session for TDX. Yeah, it was up there as well. It was I actually put it, AI and observability, the future of distributed tracing. So we're going to be oh. talking about distributed tracing, just how, what it is as a concept. And then, yeah, talking about how the world of AI, we are the AI company, you know, so I know. Had, to, had, to, <laughs> we, had to weave it in there. But yeah, I'm really excited. My first time ever talking at a conference as well. Uh, so a little it's bit nervous. Uh, <laughs> it's the 8 a.m. session. So. Oh, yes. I have a Go question. Uh, last one is we are planning to work on the upgrade to 4.6 runtime. You can sure. read it. If it's yeah, easier. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there is uh, that I, I don't have any tips and tricks to recommend, but we do have an FAQ, uh, which I can share in the chat as well. So slightly better answer. I would recommend looking at that about the, the upgrade FAQ. I'm going to share it right now. I had this up because I was um, imagining okay. I was going to get some questions about it. I have oh, a, a spra Sprash Ag Agarwal. Maybe oh, yes. He, can he Yes, he is. He is, in fact, the... He, yeah, I think he could give some insight. Okay, let me reshare this question right away. Okay, so I reshared it to the PMM, to the PM, to see if he can support the senior product manager. He said that he couldn't join live because of a conflict, but but we are sharing the question on the Slack. <laughs> Super spontaneous. My plan, my my general my advice would just be start planning now. Obviously, you have a year, as I said. Um, but yeah, it's it on the upgrade. Of course, it's a big upgrade. Um, but yeah. One minute to end. Okay, I have the reply. Is a doc. We have the last question is from Francano. Auto scaling for. CH2 has additional cost? Yeah, if you auto scale up, if it goes, if it exceeds, um, you know, wherever your agreement is, there will be additional cost. Like the feature itself doesn't have additional cost, but the uh, if you exceed your quota or usage, then it will have implications there. But that's something to talk about with your um, CSM or AE. Okay. All right. Well, I think that we are finished. Uh, no more question. Everything is set. Thank you, Ashan, for your presentation. Awesome. And oh, I have another link. It will be helpful. Wait a minute. <laughs> I feel like a journalist. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, attendees, please see the last uh, links that I share on the QA tab. And we are ready to go to the Sarah and Vivian presentation. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, everyone. Enjoy the conference.